Hello, it's Diana Marchand from dianamarchand.com and welcome to this video. I am going to make one of my absolutely favorite foods here today. And um, I actually learned it from someone who was in one of my group programs and it's been the best thing. It is um, using buckwheat. It's only using like three ingredients, buckwheat, egg white, and, and milk. I'm using almond milk. <laughs> So if you're vegan, I haven't found a good substitute for the egg yet, really nothing much works, but you can give it a try. <laughs> what we're gonna make is like a crepe, a wrap. You can even make it thicker and make it into a pancake. So it's buckwheat, right? You can make like a buckwheat pancake. It's so simple and easy. We're gonna start with buckwheat grouts. And uh, what those are, so buckwheat's a seed. It is completely gluten-free, it is a seed. And, um, now, if you're a celiac, yes, you want to make sure you buy a package that says gluten-free buckwheat. That means it has not been processed in a plant that has processed anything with wheat. Now, buckwheat grouts, as you can see, they just like, look like, I don't know, kind of like seeds in, in a way. <laughs> They're really hard in this stage. I buy them in the bulk section. I buy organic ones. And I used to, I have a video on YouTube where I sprout these, but you don't really have to sprout them to make this dish, because you're gonna cook it anyway. So it's gonna be cooked at a high temperature. So, oh, I gotta get my pan on. Okay, so it involves using, um, now my measurements, this is how I do it, so you'll just see. I do half a cup of these buckwheat grouts. Now, if you're using sprouted ones because you have some sprouted, you will need you will use less almond milk. Okay, so if you're using sprouted buckwheat, use a bit more than half a cup and use less almond milk. It's a trial and error. Start with less. It's like pancake batter. You can always add more liquid to thin it out if you want, right? So I'm doing uh, about a half a cup. This will make more than one for sure. Half a cup of buckwheat grouts. There we go. I like storing them in jars. And then, so there's my buckwheat grub. Then I'm going to do almond milk. Now, I have not got the exact measurements for this. I literally go, I start with a, I start with more than half a cup. So I'm going to go a half a cup. So this measures. And then a little more. So possibly another two tablespoons of almond milk, but I think I'm going to need more. It probably is a third, three quarter cup of almond milk, but start with less, right? And then salt. And then an egg white, but I'm going to do salt. Of course, you can leave the salt out if you're somebody who uh, really is cutting back on salt. I use uh, pink Himalayan salt, so it has a lot of minerals in it. And then one egg white, and white, and I use farm fresh eggs. We get them delivered right from a farm really close to here. So I'm very, very lucky, and the farm is amazing. So there goes the egg white. And I'm using a neutral bullet. I find these are great. If you have a magic bullet, it works too, or a blender, of course. So, okay, I just took the egg yolk, I mean the egg white, sorry. I do use the egg yolk, I do just cook it up after. Okay, so this is so simple. So with the Nutribullet, you screw the lid on like this. And then I'm gonna blend it until it's smooth. Okay, so I blended it for a little bit. Now I'm going to um, check the texture. If it's too thick, you're going to get, it's going to be hard to swirl and spread in the pan. But one thing about buckwheat is the longer it sits like this, like it's kind of like chia in a, well, chia in a way, it'll get thicker. So note that, that uh, like this is far too thick, as you can see, you might be able to see. I also didn't grind it enough. But, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you can add a bit of water too if you want. If you have thick almond milk, you can add a bit of water and a bit more almond milk. Do not add too much water, otherwise it won't have any substance. So I'm going to add, you want this like a, a crepe kind of thinness to it, okay? So I will show you once I have it blended what, I, what it looks like. Hi. Well, huh, I got it a little runny. 
Yeah, carefully. Anyways, we're going to see how this turns out. <laughs> so this is mine. Now this is probably a bit too runny, but you know what? We're going to see how this turns out. It might turn out really, really nice. Usually I make it a little bit thicker than this. So I would say it's almost three quarter cup almond milk to a half a cup of the buckwheat grits. So now I'm going to shut this off and then I'm going to show you how to make them in a pan. Hello. It's going to be hard to see my head, but that's okay. And the light's really bright here. But I wanted to show you. So I have a ceramic pan. I was going to forgot to say this. Mine has oil in it. I use grapeseed oil. You can also use sunflower oil. This is a ceramic pan. It's non-stick, but it's good to put a bit of oil in it anyways. And um, you need a non-stick pan for this, unfortunately. If you use a cast iron, actually works not bad. But a regular uh, stainless steel pan that's not non-stick is not going to work. So get these ceramic pans. These are fantastic and they're, they're okay for you. I love, I bought this, love it, love it, love it. Now, as you see, kind of see what size this pan is. It's kind of a medium sized frying pan. I'm gonna try and, I tried to kind of measure and see how much of the batter I put in here <laughs> to make a good thickness. So let's see if we can get that tonight. Usually I don't measure, right? So to me, this is so different. Oh, here, that's quarter cup and it looks about right. Now this starts cooking quite fast. I have this heat, ceramic pan should not be cooked really high. I have it on medium. I heated it up a little higher, but your stove, everything could be different. Don't use it really high. I'd say a medium, like above medium a bit for most stoves. And when I put the batter in, I kind of just swirled it around like this so that it filled the whole bottom. But then if you also uh, need to just take a spatula or something and smooth it, because if it's thick, it doesn't swirl around so easily. But um, because it starts to cook quite fast, but it begins to um, kind of all stick together quite fast, but actually these wraps take longer to cook than you would think. Now, if they seem stuck to the pan, it means they're not ready. So make sure the heat's not too high here now when it's actually cooking, because otherwise it'll burn on the bottom, but it won't be cooked in the middle. Right, so this takes some trial and error, but I guarantee you when you get this down, you're going to absolutely love these. So keep trying until you get them right. Most important thing is a non-stick pan. This one is ceramic. I highly recommend buying one. It has been absolutely fantastic to use. I love them. Um, and a, a bit of oil, grapeseed oil or sunflower oil. If you want, you can use other oils. You guys know what other, coconut oil, whatever. Um, that's what I have to say about this. So I'm just going to let it um, cook for a bit. You'll see. Yes, when you know it's done, it actually, you can lift it up with a spatula or something and it moves on the, in the pan really easily. Then it's time to flip. Then you'll see if it's golden, kind of a golden brown on the side. If it doesn't move and it seems like, oh my God, it's stuck to the pan, it's probably not. That's what this does. It's strange. It will not move. It will stick until it's ready to flip. So that's how you know. Oh, hello. I am back and I've made, well two actually, it's my second one. <laughs> the first one doesn't usually look the nicest so I ate it <laughs> and I made another one. And what happens sometime with the other one, the pan was, the second one here, the pan was a little hot so it bubbled and it got a lot of holes in it. Perfectly fine, still tastes the same but that's, you're going to see there's a lot of holes in it. So I just turned down the heat a little bit and I'm making um, a third one. It's just in, it's hard to see with this light. It's just in the, um, pan now and it's going to turn out probably the best <laughs> but this is the second one there it is right there now as you can see the bubbles but that's just it bubbles up and so these like this one made it a really good consistency it was actually a little over a quarter cup though so like I said depending on your pan size don't just take my word for it do so it um, covers the pan nicely if it's too thin it's just going to break so you want to make it thick enough but you don't want it thick like a pancake right um, because you want to roll it you want to use it and at first when you cook it sometimes it's almost a little crispy which you can eat this like naan bread absolutely so good especially if you put it when it's still hot put a bit of salt on top and maybe drizzle some nutritional yeast of course you can use fresh herbs in it you can use anything in this sun-dried tomatoes if you want it just for like a bread have along with a meal like a flatbread oh it's so good um, but I like it like also just wrapping some things in it and rolling it up or just kind of folding it in half and eating it almost like a taco. Instead of a corn tortilla, these are buckwheat tortillas. 
So there's tons of things you can do with it. Um, and you can use any sauce in it, any ingredients you would use in a regular tortilla wrap or taco, anything, even if your family wants to use it and put meat in it, whatever. Like seriously, it'll hold up. Um, now what I've done is I've just made like a, a kale salad that has um, avocado, green onions, it's a bit of a little bit of uh, brag soy and a little bit of apple cider vinegar. What else is in here? And um, cumin, salt. So that's that's what I'm gonna have in mind. But then I also cut up some great stuff that I have from the farmers market, all from the farmers market: cucumber, bell pepper, and carrots shredded. And what? I lost some. And I'm gonna add some fresh arugula too that I have from the farmers market. That's what's going in mine tonight. Anyway, oh, and cashew cheese. Some, this is the cashew cheese that I had made, the spread. So anytime you have a raw spread, excellent in these two, fantastic. So there you go, it is something that is hearty, it's gonna really fill you up, yet it's not heavy carb, it's still light, um, and you can also keep them the next day. You can make them like, they do get softer, put them lightly in a bag or something, and they will, um, Stay good, I just keep them on the counter and have them the next day also. So you, I br I've brought them traveling. I've brought them um, like in a plastic bag type thing and taken them traveling with me or in a container and had them on the road like you would eat bread, I guess. Or you could stop and put anything inside of them. Anyways, okay, enough of enough talking. Hope you enjoy them. Like I said, if you have any problem making, me, making them, just let me know. Okay, take care. Good luck. You'll love them. Bye.